pictures of the brainstem. So here is a brainstem. This has been removed from the cerebrum, and you can see midbrain, pons, and medulla. And these three are connected to the cerebellum via superior, middle, and inferior cerebellar peduncles. Now, out of this, the midbrain belongs to mesencephalon, whereas pons and medulla they belong to the rhombencephalon. So this is how the brainstem looks like. Let's just compare it with the intact brain. So here you can see this is how it looks like, and we have cut the midbrain from the cerebrum and we have removed the entire thing. Now let's first discuss the midbrain. It is mesencephalon and it is smallest out of three. See this. Now externally it is related to certain structures. You can clearly make out. Now these structures are optic tract. See this. This is the optic tract. And this is the midbrain. So this is optic tract. And still lateral to it, this is uncus and parahippocampal gyrus. So these are related to it. Below to this optic tract, somewhere over here, we will find basal vein. Below to that, posterior cerebral artery and Exactly at this junction with the pons over here, there will be superior cerebellar artery. So these many structures are related to the external aspect of the midbrain. Now third and fourth cranial now will pass between this posterior cerebral artery and superior cerebellar artery. So somewhere over here we will get third cranial now, oculomotor now, and from behind we will get the trochlear now. So these two nerves will pass between the posterior cerebral artery and superior cerebellar artery. Medially you can see this is the interpedicular fossa. So it is forming posterolateral boundary of this interpedicular fossa and is related to the stock of pituitary infundibular stock, tuber cyanarium, mammillary bodies and posterior perforated substance. Similarly, above we will get splenium. So let me show you a section to show the relation. So here is the section and this is the midbrain. This is the cavity of midbrain that is termed as cerebral aqueduct and above to it this is splenium. Okay, this is corpus callosum and this is splenium. So over here you can see above there lies splenium and somewhere over here we will get great cerebral vein plus this is the thalamus and this is posterior most part of the thalamus that is pulvinar so that is also related to the upper part of the midbrain so this is base of the brain where the brainstem has been removed and you can see this is splenium and somewhere over here will be the great cerebral vein so these are the superior relation of the midbrain see this so these are the relations of the midbrain again i am repeating above it is related to splenium pulvinar and great cerebral vein externally it is related to the optic tract see over here and now you can clearly make out this is parahippocampal gyrus and this is uncus and somewhere over here will be basal vein, posterior cerebral artery and superior cerebellar artery. And this is the mammillary body. So somewhere over here we will get interpedicular fossa. So this is how all around the midbrain is related to various structures. Now when we cut it and detach it from the cerebrum and when we see the cross section of the midbrain, let me show you. See over here, this is the cerebral aqueduct, cavity of midbrain. Above it is connected to the cavity of third ventricle and below to the cavity of fourth ventricle. Now if we imagine a horizontal passing exactly through this cerebral aqueduct, then this cross section of the midbrain is divided into two parts ventrally oriented cerebral peduncle and dorsally oriented tectum so by and large we divide the midbrain into tectum and cerebral peduncles now individual cerebral peduncle is further divided by substantia nigra see this brownish gray colored sheet of gray matter extending from the upper part of the pons to the subthalamic region and this is intimately connected to the basal nuclei so this substantia nigra divides each cerebral peduncle into tegmentum substantia nigra itself and crus cerebri. So these two are crus cerebri or crura cerebri. See this. This is substantia nigra and this is the tegmentum. Behind will be tectum. Now tectum is nothing but it is made up of colliculi. So here you can see four colliculi, two superior and two inferior. See this. And they are separated from each other by a cruciform sulcus. Collectively these four colliculi are termed as corpora quadrigemina and above this cruciform sulcus shows a depression, see this, and this lodges pineal gland. Let me show you in another specimen. So here these four are the colliculi, and this is what we are discussing. This is pineal gland lodging in a depression at the upper end of cruciform sulcus. See, this is cruciform sulcus. Now, when you trace superior colliculi, you can see a bundle of white matter. This is termed as superior brachium, and via the superior brachium, it is connected to the lateral geniculate body. It is part and parcel of metathalamus. Similarly, this is inferior colliculi connected by another band of white matter. This is termed as inferior brachium and somewhere over here it is cut but somewhere over here it is connected to the medial geniculate body. So medial and lateral geniculate bodies are part and parcel of metathalamus and they are connected to superior and inferior colliculi via two brachia. So superior colliculus is connected to lateral geniculate body via superior brachium and inferior colliculus is connected to medial geniculate body via inferior brachium. Now these colliculi are serving as reflex centers. So superior colliculi is related to the visual reflex center and inferior colliculi is related to the auditory reflex center.
So this is the cruciform sulcus and the lower part of this vertical limb of the cruciform sulcus shows a bulge and that is nothing but frenulum veli, see this and this is the superior medullary velum that already we have discussed in the fourth ventricle. So here is the frenulum veli and this shows decussation of fourth cranial now. So at the level of inferior colliculus the fourth cranial now, trochlear now will emerge out and the fibers will decusset and you can clearly make out this is the stump of trochlear now or fourth cranial now, see how it is going in front. So here also you can make out a small stump is left but here this you can clearly make out this is the trochlear now so here the fibers will decussate to form frenulum veli and then this trochlear now will wind around the little aspect of the midbrain particularly cross cerebri and as we have discussed third and fourth cranial now will pass between posterior cerebral artery and superior cerebellar artery so this is the trochlear now so it is the only cranial now emerging out from dorsal aspect of the brainstem except first and second cranial now all the cranial nerves are emerging out from or attached to the brainstem and out of all only trochlear now emerges out from the dorsal aspect of the brainstem. See this, this is the trochlear now. Let me show you in another specimen. So here just I wanted to show you the trochlear now. See the same, the fibers are a bit longer and preserved. See this, reaching almost up to the ventral aspect. Along the right side also you can clearly make out, see how thin it is and it is dedicated to only one muscle that is superior oblique. See, this is the trochlear now. See this. Okay, so it will emerge out at the level of inferior colliculus. And the fibers will decrease it. So the fibers will supply the opposite superior oblique. See this, up to this point it is preserved and similarly at the level of superior colliculus from the medial aspect of this crust cerebri. Now these two are crust cerebri, that is what we have discussed. So along the medial aspect there is a groove and through this groove the oculomotor now emerges out. See this, this is a stump of oculomotor now. So it emerges out at the level of superior colliculus whereas the trochlear now emerges out at the level of inferior colliculus and these two nerves will then pass between the posterior cerebral artery and superior cerebellar artery. See this. Now here lies the interpedicular fossa and its contents. Now if I put a cut parallel to the substance in nigra and if I reflect cross cerebri, just see it's a coronally oriented sheet of grey matter. See this, you can also see in the depth the discolorated or pigmented substance in nigra. See this, deep inside and it extends above up to the south thalamic level. See you on the other side also. See this is the substance in nigra. Deep inside also you will see the fibers. Let me cut portion of cross cerebri to show you the substantia nigra. So deep inside you can appreciate the discolored area. This is the substantia nigra. See this. Okay. It is made up of pars compacta and pars reticularis. Here also you can appreciate. Now along the dorsal aspect below the inferior colliculi you can see these white bundles. These are superior cerebral peduncles. See this. And in between this is superior medullary velum and these peduncles will enter into cerebellum. So cerebellum is connected to these two superior cerebral peduncles and the fibers will pass through it. See this. These are basically converging peduncles and forming part of the boundary of fourth ventricle. See this again in this specimen. Here are the superior cerebral peduncle partially cut and these are the colliculi. So here this is how it forms part of the boundary of fourth ventricle. So this is how the midbrain looks like. Next is pons. The little meaning of pons is bridge. As you can see this is the middle cerebral peduncle. This one is the another middle cerebral peduncle. So it is a connecting device and above and below also it connects the upper and lower area. So basically it behaves as a bridge and so as the name given to it as pons. Now the striking feature of the pons is along the ventral aspect. There are multiple horizontal grooves and these grooves are produced because of the underlying corticoponto and ponto cerebellar fibers which are crossing the midline and forming this horizontal grooves. Now this is directly proportionate to the telencephalization. So more the development of the telencephalon more the surface area of the cerebral cortex, more the number of neurons are accommodated and more the number of corticopontine and pontocerebellar fibers. So this is the basilar part of the pons and higher the development of the cerebral cortex, more the ventral convexity of the pons. So that is directly proportionate to the number of fibers it is accommodating. So this is basilar part of the pons and as I told you posteriorly it is connected to the or continuous as middle cerebellar peduncle and then it is connected to the cerebellar hemispheres. So at the junction between the basilar part and the middle cerebellar peduncle, you will find stumps of the fifth cranial nerve or trigeminal nerve. There are two roots emerging out at the junction, the medial motor and lateral sensory. The sensory is larger as compared to the motor. So these are the medial and lateral or the motor and sensory roots of the trigeminal nerve. And when you draw a vertical line just behind to the sensory root of the trigeminal nerve, then posterior portion, this is the middle cerebellar peduncle. So up to this imaginary line is the basilar part of the pons or ventral aspect of the pons. It is having two borders, upper and lower. The upper border, particularly in the midline, forms the posterior boundary of interpedicular fossa and remaining border is related to the superior cerebellar artery. The lower border shows its junction with 
the medulla see this and over here lies antero inferior cerebellar artery now in the midline along the ventral aspect you can see a uh, sulcus this is basilar sulcus and this is occupied by basilar artery basically this portion of the pons or ventral aspect of the pons is related to the clivus let me show you so this is the clivus it is made up of basi sphenoid and basi occiput and over here lies this ventral aspect of the pons see this if we put it like this so this is how it is lodged okay and over here along the superior border of the petrous temporal there is attachment of tentorium cerebelli and it is having a tentorial notch so that notch passes through the midbrain and below that notch the entire pons medulla and the cerebellar hemispheres are lodging like this so this portion of the pons is related to the clivus now posteriorly it is related to the cerebellar hemispheres and in between pons and cerebellum there lies cavity of fourth ventricle so floor of the fourth ventricle particularly upper half is contributed by the posterior aspect or dorsal aspect of the pons so if you remove this portion of cerebellum and if we see it from behind then you can easily make out that the posterior surface of the pons see this is the pons and this is its posterior surface once you remove the cerebellum this is how it looks like and this is the pons its dorsal surface and that forms upper half of the floor of the fourth ventricle now above it is related to the superior medullary velum let me show you another specimen see over here so deep to it this is superior medullary velum deep to it we will get dorsal aspect of the pons and if you remove it then this is how it looks like so this is how it looks like when you zoom in and when you closely observe it it is triangular in shape bounded on either side by superior cerebellar peduncles below by stria medullaris this is the median sulcus these two are medial eminences and over here you will find superior fovea which is the upper end of sulcus limitans and this is the region of facial colliculi somewhere over here we will get locus ciliaris that is part and parcel of reticular formation so all these features we already discussed in a separate video of rhomboid fossa so you can refer it to know the detailed description of these features so this is how the dorsal aspect of the pons looks like and it forms upper half of lower of fourth ventricle see in this sagittal section this is how it looks like so this is the pons and this is the cavity of fourth ventricle and this is how it is related to the cerebellar hemispheres and particularly in this specimen this horizontally running fibers producing sulci or fissures are clearly seen so let me zoom in and that will give you an idea how this indentations are produced so this so the corticopontine fibers when they terminate into the pontine nuclei the fibers from these pontine nuclei will emerge out they are ponto cerebellar fibers they will cross the midline and they will reach to the opposite middle cerebellar peduncle and this is how they produce along the surface now next to the pons is the medulla its shape is truncated cone like and so as it looks like a bulb and so as it is termed as bulb and we have got some terminologies like bulbar paralysis so this is the bulb it is a synonym of medulla oblongata and below it is continuous with spinal cord so the junction between medulla and spinal cord is somewhere at the imaginary line passing at upper aspect or upper part of the first cervical vertebra or the atlas and it also passes through middle of the odontoid process so if you imagine a horizontal line passing at upper border of the atlas and middle of the odontoid process that will be an imaginary junction between medulla and spinal cord as it is in continuation of spinal cord most of the external features are similar with the spinal cord so it is having anteromedian fissure it is having posteromedian sulcus and it is having anterolateral and posterolateral sulci and deep to this there lies anterior lateral and posterior white matter and they will coincide with the anterior lateral and posterior funiculi of the spinal cord so this is how the medulla looks like it is connected to the cerebellum via inferior cerebellar peduncles so here are the inferior cerebellar peduncles and when you see a separate specimen see this is how it looks like so this is the medulla and this is anteromedian fissure and at its junction with the pons it shows a depression this is termed as foramen cecum and then it is showing a continuous demarcation with the lower border of the pons say this posteriorly in lower part the medulla is closed and it is almost similar with the spinal cord but in upper part it gets open and that open part of the medulla forms lower half of the floor of the fourth ventricle so here in another specimen this is just to show you this is the closed part of the medulla somewhere over here will be the junction of medulla and spinal cord and this is the open part of the medulla say this and that forms lower half of the floor of the fourth ventricle these two are diverging inferior cerebellar peduncles and they will open into the cerebellum so this is how it looks like again here will be the foramen cecum now when you closely observe it between this anteromedian fissure and anterolateral sulcus there are two elevations they are termed as pyramid and in the lower part within this anteromedian fissure there will be decussation of this cortico spinal tract over here somewhere now lateral to this anterolateral sulcus 
you will find another elevation which is approximately 1.5 cm long this is termed as olive see on other side it is produced by underlying inferior olivary nuclear complex and as you know the fibers emerging out from the inferior olivary nuclear complex will form climbing fibers will pass through inferior cerebellar peduncle to reach to the cerebellar cortex so this is olive and behind olive you will find posterolateral sulcus see this and behind posterolateral sulcus is the inferior cerebellar peduncle see this again on another side so on other side of the midline this is the anteromedian fissure these two are pyramids then you will get anterolateral sulci then you will get olives behind olive you will get posterolateral sulci see this and behind posterolateral sulci these two are inferior cerebellar peduncles so this is how anterolaterally the medulla looks like now when you observe closely at the anterolateral sulcus you will get some filaments emerging out and they unite to form hypoglossal now so basically hypoglossal now will emerge out at the junction between pyramid and olive through anterolateral sulci now let me show you these filaments in another specimen see in this specimen when i zoom in you will easily appreciate the fibers or filaments emerging out of it so this is anteromedian fissure these two are pyramids and this is olive here is the anterolateral sulcus and can you see the filaments forming this hypoglossal now see this this is a stump of hypoglossal now see these are the filaments emerging out at anterolateral sulcus Similarly, when you observe closely the posterolateral sulcus situated between olive and inferior cerebellar peduncle, so from above downward, you will see another filaments or the rootlets forming 9th, 10th, and 11th cranial now from above downward, particularly the cranial accessory. So, glossopharyngeal, vagus, and cranial part of the accessory now will emerge out at posterolateral sulcus between olive and inferior cerebellar peduncle. Now, at the junction of pons and medulla, at pontomedullary junction along the inferior border of the pons, three more cranial now emerge out, namely 6, 7, and 8. So at the junction of pons with the pyramid, somewhere over here at the pontomedullary junction, the sixth cranial now, abducens now will emerge out, which is not preserved, but just you'll have to imagine. Then at the junction of olive and the lower border of the pons, you can see seventh cranial now. Here the stump has been preserved. Now again, it is having two roots, medial motor and lateral sensory. The motor is larger as compared to the smaller sensory, and the smaller sensory is termed as nervous intermediate. So this is the stump of the facial now emerging out at the junction of pons and olive, and laterally at the junction of pons and inferior cerebellar peduncle. You can see this is vestibular cochlear now. Now this is the pontocerebellar cerebellar angle, and this is vestibular cochlear now. Again, two roots: medial vestibular and lateral cochlear. See this. So three cranial now, six, seven, and eight. They emerge out at ponto medullary junction, whereas nine, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth they emerge out from posterolateral and anterolateral sulci along the medulla respectively. Now, when you see dorsal aspect of the medulla again, it is related to the cerebellum, and that forms part of the floor of the fourth ventricle that we have discussed, and it is related to the cavity of fourth ventricle. So if you see it like this and if you remove the cerebellum this is how it becomes so in between this you will get cavity of fourth ventricle and that we already discussed in a separate video so in upper part you will get open part of the medulla and this is the closed part of the medulla now here will be the posteromedian sulcus and on either side you will get fasciculus gracilis and at the margin of the infralateral margin of the floor of fourth ventricle it enlarges to become two gracile tubercles and they are produced because of underlying nucleus gracilis see this these are gracile tubercles this is fasciculus gracilis and Supralateral to it, you will get fasciculus cuneatus and cuneate tubercles. Again, they are produced by underlying cuneate nuclei. So, when you see it in another specimen, see this, where the cerebellum as well as the roof of the fourth ventricle is removed. So, this is posteromedian sulcus, and here will be the fasciculus gracilis. These two are fasciculus cuneatus. There is formation of gracile tubercle, and here there is formation of cuneate tubercle. This is the open part of the medulla, and these are the inferior cerebellar peduncles forming infralateral boundaries of the floor of the fourth ventricle again posterior superior to the cuneate tubercle somewhere over here there is another elevation between cuneate tubercle and inferior cerebellar peduncle this is termed as tuberculum cinereum and it is produced by underlying nucleus of spinal tract of trigeminal now or the spinal nucleus of trigeminal now it extends up to the second cervical spinal segment so here will be the tuberculum cinereum so three elevations you need to remember Gracile tubercle, cuneate tubercle, and tuberculum cinereum. And beyond that, you will get inferior cerebellar peduncle. See this, these are diverging peduncles forming infralateral boundary of the floor of the fourth ventricle. So, that again we have discussed in a separate video of rhomboid fossa. Similarly, here you can appreciate stria medullaris. So, that is a junction between pons and medulla, particularly pons and open part of the medulla. So, this is the open part of the medulla. Again, it is triangular in shape. And there are some features like median sulcus, medial eminence, or hypoglossal triangle, vagal triangle, inferior fovea, then area postrema funicular separance, obex. Now everything we have described or we have discussed in detail in a video of rhomboid fossa so that you can see. So this is how the dorsal aspect of the medulla looks like. Now along the ventral aspect of the medulla, in upper part, 
one thing I wanted to show you is the formation of anterior external arcuate fibers. See this. You can see a white band passing across the pyramid, anterolateral sulcus, olive, and going in the inferior cerebellar peduncle. See it closely. This is produced by the fibers coming from the arcuate nuclei, which is related to the ventromedial aspect of the pyramid. And majority of the fibers from this arcuate nuclei, which is a displaced spontane nuclei, will decusset and they will run superficial to the pyramid and olive and they will reach to the inferior cerebellar peduncle to reach to the cerebellum. So this is an alternate route of corticopontal cerebellar pathway. See this. Here also you will appreciate the anterior external arcuate fibers. And some of the fibers from these arcuate nuclei will pass through the substance of the medulla and they will emerge out at the sulcus. Then they decuss it to enter to the opposite inferior cerebellar peduncle and these are termed as stria medullaris. See this. They are found underneath the appendima and dividing the floor of the fourth ventricle into upper and lower halves. See this. So the same fibers from the arcuate nuclei which are forming anterior external arcuate fibers uh, externally and the same fibers will form stria medullaris internally along the floor. So this is about external features of brainstem plus attachments.